it's very strange that Norway that consider itself to be like an LGBTQI, but it's yeah. very. It's Norway I consider itself to be like an LGBTQIA friendly country it just isn't and it's it's like we do these crazy things like you can you can get granted asylum in Norway on the grounds of being trans and if you are you don't get access to uh, gender affirming treatment until you've been here in the country for like a certain amount of time like two years or something and it's like so we, 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 we like say to people, you're welcome to live here because we're like an LGBT or we're like a very trans friendly country. Come, you should be able to live here and then you don't get access to treatment.
And I looked at myself bandaged and unbandaged and unruly with all those scars. And I said, God damn, I love these scars.
roulette makes it worth it.
should be lovable and into terra incognita to feel in kilojoules as the smallest glint or the feeling in the fullest body of work we will find our own land
was a reality in my life in 1998 that I would, there were trans people being murdered all around me and this insane fear, um, will I be next? Um, I remember going to a memorial for Amanda Milan, a trans woman who was murdered in the early 2000s here in New York City. Um, she was stabbed outside of the Port Authority and for my entire life as a trans woman for 21 years, I have been hearing about witnessing going to memorials, going to Trans Days of Remembrance, and the trauma of that is I don't actually even have words for the trauma of that. And I think about just black people in general who have watched our people be murdered in the streets and the collective trauma of that. And I disassociated from it so much because it's too much. It is way too much. And we live in a culture that consistently stigmatizes trans people, tell us that we aren't who we say we are. When um, I read the um, Blinds Defending Families brief on this Amy, on Amy Stevens case, they've been over backwards to not use female pronouns to refer to Amy Stevens. There is this insistence in, in misgendering her. There, and what underlines most of discrimination against trans people is the insistence that we are always and only the gender we were assigned to birth, that we're somehow fraudulent. And when we have a, an administration, we have government policies that continually stigmatize us, it makes it okay for the person on the street who sees a trans person and decides that we should not exist anymore. And it is just, I do, I'm at a law, I'm really at a loss because I know it's intersectional. I know that it's about employment. I know it's about health care. I know it's about homelessness and having access to all of these things to keep us out of harm.
calling and hearkening are kind of spiritual reckoning. That spiritual reckoning is beauty. I'm asking the world, are you ready to find beauty in the parts of yourself that you've marked for dead? And then in doing that process, what I promise you is that the world will be so much more beautiful. I'm still depressed. I'm still lonely. I'm still anxious. I still am self-hating, all these things. But goddamn, I see the beauty.